Hello, my lovely Leo, and welcome to your general energy reading. This is just a general reading, so please do take what resonates and toss the rest. Also, if you haven't had a chance to check out your other readings, please do so. If you do enjoy this, however, please do like, subscribe, share, hit that notification bell, all that other great stuff. I would greatly appreciate it. It helps grow my channel and it's completely free, so why not? Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. We will do a past, present, future with this tarot deck. The other tarot deck we will use for your challenge card. We will use three oracle decks to clarify, and then we will go back to this tarot deck to give a clarifying future uh, clarifier. A clarifying future clarifier, that was awesome. Okay, anyway, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Let's see what we've got going on for you this week end and next week and see oh we got some big cards here oh all righty <laughs> we're starting out with the tower card okay so looks like recently you have had some upheaval um so something has really shaken itself up in your life recently so i don't know if it's been uh your relationship i don't know if it's been a family situation i don't know if it's been work um, I don't know what's gone on, but it does look like the universe and spirit has basically said no more. You need a big uh, shake up. You need to kind of start from scratch. And um, so if it's been a breakup or something like that recently, um, you probably know if you have not gone through this. Okay. If this has not happened for you, but it's something that you are really kind of in the throes of you're feeling it right you feel like this relationship is like on the verge it's on such thin ice it's ready to fall through this job is ready to implode any day now those kinds of things i would highly advise that maybe you want to cut bait and run now because this is telling me that that's the best bet for you right and typically when you have a card like this the universe is basically saying you need a reset because it's usually a good thing, to be frank. A lot of times we hold on to crap for far too long. We are creatures of habit. We are people who like comfort, even when it means that we are exchanging it for uh, what would probably be much better for us. And spirit, the universe, our higher divination, they know what's better for us, right? So a lot of times when we're not letting go, They've got to come in and they've got to give us a kick in the butt, right? And say, get it gone, right? They have to really put the smack down. So sometimes when we're like, why did such and such leave us? Why did this job go to crap? Why did this happen to me? You know, nine times out of 10, it's because there's something so much better ahead for us that we just don't see, right? And if we kept holding on to that crap, we would just go down with it. We'd go down with the ship, right? But now that we have gotten away from it, we have a chance. We've released, so now we can receive something better. So, you know, if you're, if you're seeing this, if this hasn't already happened to you, and you're seeing this writing on the wall, get, get gone, right? <laughs> Take off, because you need to. You got to go. Um, but we have the Knight of Cups here. And the Knight of Cups is letting me know that there are, the opportunities are already on the way. Okay, so if they're not already starting to rear their heads, they're going to. So if your tower moment is, you know, particularly in your relationship, I feel like your knight in shining armor is already headed your way if you haven't already met them or already kind of started to be pursued by. Um, okay, so if it's in work, opportunities are going to start flowing in if they haven't already okay so don't worry about the fact that oh my gosh but you know if this is starting to go down or if i let go of it before it's time or this or that you know what happens if i have this you know huge gap where i'm all by myself or i don't have a job or this or that it's not going to be a gap right we've already got the opportunities here it's already coming in the universe is providing already right that's not a problem for you. Um, I, I think that's just, it's, it's innately ready for you. Um, I think it's already kind of set up. And I feel like this is because this is something that you've known for a very long time needed to happen, um, but you had just gotten complacent, comfortable, 
Um, maybe not even comfortable, to be honest with you. I mean, the vibe that I feel here is not even comfortable. It's just complacent. It's just like, I don't want to have to start a whole new job. I don't love this job. I don't even hardly enjoy this job. It just pays bills, right? Or I don't really like this person that much. <laughs> I tolerate this person, but it would require me to break up with them, find somebody new, maybe have to move out and rent's expensive and housing is hard to find. And uh, uh, uh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's more logistics. It's a convenience thing, right? And do you really want convenience or do you want love? Do you really want convenience uh, or, I mean, a paycheck, but beat your head against the wall every day? Or do you want a job that you like? They say, if you work a job that you love, you never work a day in your life, right? So think about that. And it's followed by the death card. And really and truly, I think the death card in tarot is probably the only place that death is good, right? Because death is like a, re a new beginning. It's, an, it's a chance for a new beginning, right? It's like saying, this is the end of a cycle. So it's telling you right here that yes, that when this tower comes down, which it needs to do, it's telling you, it has to come down. So all this upheaval you're feeling, it's necessary, okay? And if you haven't kind of put the kibosh on it, if you see the writing on the wall, go ahead and let it fall, okay? Because there's opportunities coming. Make sure you are making good use of these opportunities though, right? Because if you let a whole bunch of opportunities go by, while you know this foundation's crumbling, while you know this job sucks, while you know that this person you're with sucks, but you just keep hanging on to it and you let opportunities go by, well, then you're gonna be in real trouble because then when the death card comes, if this person leaves you, or if this job folds or lays off or whatever else happens, or you really get so fed up that you have to walk and you've already missed all your opportunities, well, then what are you gonna do, right? So be proactive, right? That's why we're watching this, right? We're watching this so we can know what to do, right? To be proactive, to know that there's an ending coming to this cycle and to know that any upheaval we're feeling or uncomfortability that we're feeling or, you know, why is this happening? Or why does this suck so bad? Or why does this not feel like my dream life anymore? Or anything I've ever wanted? <laughs> this is why it's telling you it's time to it's time to burn this thing down. It's time to grab onto a better opportunity. It's time to put an end to this crap cycle and start a new one. And really and truly, I mean, we have just ended a 15 year cycle when Jupiter moves into Aquarius, right? We're starting a whole new 21 year cycle. Now's the time, shift it. Let's shift it, right? Let's get out of that funky cycle that we've been in and move into the good one. We're feeling that change. We want that change. Let's get that change moving. Let's roll with it, right? But don't miss those opportunities because boom, if people around you are feeling it and they start rolling with it and they decide to cut you off <laughs> because they feel the same way or get an itch, the itch to change something up and you're not grabbing the opportunities and they do, you could be left out in the cold. So keep up, right? So let's see what we've got here with your challenge card. And nine times out of 10, our biggest challenge is ourselves. I find that every time we are, we get in our own way. We are our own biggest enemies. We overthink, we're slow to react. We question ourselves, we doubt. Queen of Swords. And I feel like this is our own energy. I really truly do. For most of us, I feel like this is our energy. I feel like we have that change feeling in us. I feel like we are affected by that change feeling. I feel like, you know, Leo, I feel like you are that fiery change, that fiery sword here, that change of kind of like, I want to really be strong and be powerful. And I've got that queenly power and I want to make the change and be the change but I'm also my own worst enemy in that I don't know when to grab on, right? Because the queen wants to kind of sit and kind of watch over, right? The Knight of Cups is a slow moving, a slow moving opportunity but it's not so slow <laughs> that you're going to have forever 
to allow it to, you know, sit around while you kind of contemplate and think and rest on your throne. Um, you know, so I feel like, you know, you're kind of coming into this power. I feel like this is your energy. But I think your energy is such that you want to control the situation rather than accept the situation, okay? So I think that you're thinking, I don't need to be looking for opportunities. I don't need to be looking for change. I need to be fixing this, okay? And I think that's just because you are strong-willed. As a queen, you want to just sit and command. I can fix this, I can fix that, I can do this, I can do that. And I don't need to be chasing opportunities. I don't need to be, you know, jumping ship. I don't need to be doing any of that. You know, that's not what queens do. That's not what leaders do. And I think that's kind of where you're getting in your own way, realistically, okay? I truly think that that's gonna be your biggest problem is again, recognizing when it's time to go, recognizing that this is no longer serving you, recognizing that this cycle needs to end and before it ends, because it's not your choice, it's the universe's choice, it's somebody else's choice, it's spirit's choice, it's your higher divination's choice, it may be you know, another person who decides, you know, I'm just gonna jump ship and walk then. You know, you never know what might happen, but clearly it's unstable for a reason. Before you let that happen, you need to be proactive. And that's gonna be your biggest challenge is knowing that you may need to jump ship and grab an opportunity, okay? Before something else ends the cycle and you're left holding on to a life raft, okay? So, don't let you, don't get into your own head to try to make things ha bend to your will. Try to fix things. And I know a lot of us like to be control freaks. We like to be fixers. I myself, as an Aries, am like that. My child is a Leo and he's very much like that. He wants to control and fix everything. You know, I'm not going to change direction. I'm not going to fix this or you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to change direction uh, you know, I'm not going to, you know, kind of go with the flow in any way. Or if I see that this needs, I'm not going to reroute for that. No, I'm just going to bulldoze right through it. I can fix it. I can, I can make it my way. I can bend it to my will. We can't always do that. And especially when the universe is telling us don't do that, right? It won't, it won't end out well for us. So let's not. Okay, let's just know when to hold them, know when to fold them, right? And this is a time to fold them and grab onto the next opportunity, something better, something that fills us with joy, something that says, hey, this is more fun. This is going to be better for us. This is going to be a, a, a more exciting opportunity and try something new. Okay, definitely. All right, so let's grab your psychic energy card here on the tower. Let's see what it has to say for you. And hopefully it's something really exciting. Let's see. Spiritual union. All right. And again, I do feel like the spiritual union here, it, this is your tower moment is about somebody that you do have a spiritual union with. That doesn't necessarily mean it is your significant other. This could be, you know, a family member that you are, you know, entwined with that has become toxic for you and you need to really break apart from them. Um, this could be somebody that you are, you know, very best friends in the world with that you work with, but you no longer are able to work with them anymore because it's affecting your friendship, you know, so just because it's a spiritual union, it doesn't necessarily have to be a romantic union, but I do feel like for most of you, this is a relationship that is kind of crumbling. Okay. And because of that, I do think that you're not you know, super thrilled with that. I feel like there is a better spiritual union out there for you. I think maybe at one time this was a nice spiritual union, but that has no, you have not grown together. You've grown apart. And so now you are a union of convenience. You are not a good spiritual tie. And this is letting you know that there is a much better spiritual tie out there for you. 
So when somebody else comes in that kind of piques your interest, you do not let logistics stop you from leaving. I don't care if that means you have to split the house. I don't care if that means you have to split the rent. I don't care if that means you have to uh, fight over who gets the cat and the dog and this and that. If you are living a life where you are not in love and happy and in a spiritual union just because you want to cohabitate and share on some bills, you know what? You can do that with somebody that you really love too, okay? It just may take a moment, okay? So when this opportunity comes in, this may be the right one, and you can still get right back there to do that, um, you know, but staying in a place where you're unhappy or not really uh, living your best life because it's it's easier than having to do a lot to get, you know, move out or, you know, find somebody new or whatever. And we're all guilty of that. I'm doing that like it's such a, we've all been guilty of that. I mean, come on, it's the economy. If you don't live, you know, if you don't cohabitate with a roommate or somebody, then, you know, you're living in your parents' basement for most people anymore. I mean, to be honest with you, it's pretty sad, really. So let's see what we've got here. This is the moon deck and we have protection. And I think that's exactly what you're doing here, right? I think protect, you're in protective mode, right? That's why you're staying either in the relationship or at the job because you know it's safe. It's, you know, you guys can pay the rent together or the bills together or rely on each other to take out the trash or make dinner or what, you, it's what you're used to, okay? Or the job pays the bills. You know the check cashes every week or so it has, right? So you're in protective mode. You're not in you're not in happiness mode. You're not in love mode. You're not in joy mode. You're not in sunshine mode. You're you're in protective mode. So it's like fight or flight, right? It's not thriving mode. It's surviving mode. And nobody wants to live their life like that, right? That's what this is. This is like no. I'm sitting here. I'm being the queen. I'm sitting here telling people what to do and I'm trying to force my, I'm forcing myself to be happy in this predicament. That's what I'm trying to do. I can do it. I can make this place happy. I will make it happen. Well, you can't do that. You can't force people to be who you want them to be any more than you can force yourself to be happy in an environment that you're not happy in, okay? You just can't do it. You're in a protective mode. But you know what? If this person comes along and they spark joy in you, you need to take the risk, okay? No risk, no reward, right? So let's see what we can find on the death card. We're gonna pull a general advice card on this one. See if it gives us any general advice to kind of go along. But I think, you know, protective mode is fine, but it's not to live in, right? That's what you go in when you're in a brand new situation, for short term, those kinds of things, but nobody wants to live in a protective mode. No one wants to have to constantly live, like I have to live this way, guarded, walls up 24 seven, never really being able to let my guard down, be just joyfully happy, be thrilled, love the people I'm with. That's, that's living, right? That's thriving, that's not surviving, right? Okay, so this says, take responsibility for your life as a creative adventure. How can you live with more meaning, integrity, and truth, right? And that's just it. You want to live with more meaning. You want to be creative and happy. You know, give yourself creative license to live in a place where you can be your best self, be your best you, right? Live with your truth, right? Live in your truth, right? That's what you want. You don't want to live in a place where you're like, oh, I'm pretending to be happy and joyful, but really and truly, I'm just just want to go in the other room and be away from this person. Like we're roommates at best, you know, or I, I'm pretending that I like this job, but really I just want this stupid paycheck and I'd rather beat my head against the wall than go in every day. You know what I'm saying? You don't want that. And I'm not saying you have to love your job, okay? I know very few people will just, oh, I'm so thrilled to get up and go to work every morning. You know, I understand that. But you don't have to feel like I'm beating my head against the wall either every day. <laughs> so if you're feeling like that or you're scared or that it's risky that you're going to, you know, be out of work the next day because every day you're kind of like, oh, gosh, this is, you know, work politics and dynamics and people are getting laid off left, right and center. And you're, you know, it's a worry or you're stressed out to the to the max because they're using and abusing you to do twice the work you should be doing. Those kinds of things. Right. Nobody's going to nobody wants to live like that. 
don't do it, right? That's when it needs to come to an end. That's the end of that cycle. Because if not, it's gonna be the end of you, right? Stress can kill you for real, okay? So let's pull three cards out of here to kind of give you some uh, thoughts, advice, general energy kind of moving forward over the next couple months to just kind of keep in mind the back of your head there to see where you could be if you kind of do what you need to do and uh, see where we can go from here. All right, so we've got Ace of Swords, Judgment, and Temperance. And I think these cards are perfect for you because ultimately you want balance back in your life, right? You don't want to be unhappy, but you also don't want to be, you know, not protected, right? You want a good balance. And I think you can have that easily, right? The universe is telling you you can't live like this anymore. You're obviously stressed or unhappy or in a fight or flight mode or just, just not comfortable, whatever, right? We know this. So you need balance back. But this this uh, Knight of Cups is could be your knight in shining armor to give you that balance, right? Be a person that you can both like and feel like you can share with and be protected by, right? So that gives you that opportunity. The judgment card is definitely letting me know that, you know, you no longer need anybody's approval, right? I feel like you've kind of grown over the next month or two. If you start moving out, if you start making these moves, right? If you start letting that tower fall, you start going with your gut and going with somebody that's going to make you feel better, choosing that job that makes you feel better, choosing those that person, that love that makes you feel better. You're not gonna need somebody to guide you. You're not gonna need somebody to talk you down from a ledge. You're not gonna care about anybody else's judgment because at that time, you feel rebalanced, protected, cared for. You have all the things that you need, right? nothing else really will matter to you. And at that point, you're Ace of Swords energy, right? So you're no longer worried about this Queen of Swords making things happen for you, right? Because you have an Ace of Swords, right? This Ace of Swords could be your energy, it could be your partner's energy, it could be the combined, the energy combined, where you feel now that once you're rebalanced, refocused and recentered, you feel protected as well as loved you feel cared for as well as strengthened, that you can take on the world, right? You don't need anybody else to tell you what to do. You don't need anybody's judgment or care about it. You feel well balanced and you can take on the world, right? And I feel that's everything that could be there for you. There is a spiritual union waiting for you. There is somebody who's going to make you feel protected without you having to live in a protective phase, right? And, and truly, you're going to be able to have that life that is creative license, that is joyful, that is more open and freeing. And all of that is going to come with the ending of this situation you've been in, which has not served you. Okay? So all you have to do is really take that opportunity when it comes and realize that what you've got now, it's no longer serving you. Let it go. Okay, so I hope this works for you. If it does resonate with you, please do let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, I hope you will like, subscribe, share, hit that notification bell, and I hope to see you back really soon. Bye.